uh, Jose Luis uh, Vallejo uh, and um, uh, Belinda Tato are um, founders and directors of the firm Ecosistema Urbano, established in 2000 and currently with offices in Madrid, Boston, and Miami. They have uh, led workshops, lectured, and taught at the most prestigious institutions worldwide. Uh, since 2010, they have been uh, faculty at Harvard University Graduate School of Design in Cambridge and Columbia University Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation in New York. Ecosistema Urbano is a team of architects, designers, and professionals specialized in urban innovation projects operating within the principles of design thinking at the intersection between different disciplines, architecture, landscape design, engineering, and sociology. Their approach can be defined as urban social design by which they understand the design of environments, spaces, dynamics, and tools in order to improve the self-organization of citizens, social interaction within communities, and their relationship with the environment. Ecosistema Urbano has used this philosophy to design and implement projects in urban contexts from three different continents. Uh, without further ado, Jose, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, can you hear me, right? right? Yes. Yes. Thank okay. You. I'm gonna jump directly into into showing one sec. Okay, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, uh, well, I'm gonna try to, to fly more than to run because I want to show like some projects and also it's like, um, I don't know, the amount of minutes is not that big. So I will try to, to go fast. So the, I mean, I, I'm here representing Ecosystem Urbano. Uh, Sujeta already presented uh, me and my partner and also, um, well, more or less the, the, the work of the office. Um, one second. Okay. Can, yes. Well, uh, also our uh, the, the design philosophy, which is this idea that she uh, communicated, which is uh, urban social design, and these three words are are very relevant in in uh, in the project I'm, I'm going to show. So I'm not going to say anything else about uh, urban social design because he already uh, talked about it. But uh, I want to show the city from this point of view. No? Usually, now I, I can imagine that we are like a big group of architects here, uh, Francesco, right? We are like mainly, yes. uh, okay, so uh, I will, I mean, I'm also an architect and urban designer, but I want to see, uh, the, in, let's say the city from outdoor spaces better than indoor spaces, no? So in this case, uh, no, we, we, I, I did this slide in order to confront this idea of no, the face of the people confronting uh, how we usually architects uh, look at the city, like how we perceive the city from this idea of uh, Google Maps, uh, which is only uh, paying attention to the infrastructure, to geometries, etc. And we are losing completely one, one big part of the equation, which is the social uh, aspect and the social space and the, the, the space in which the social connections happen. So that's why I, I usually want to see things from this more this perspective, uh, better than from the Google Maps, uh, you know, trying to use other kind of ways to visualize the city, which is the, uh, through the connections created by the citizens interacting uh, uh, between themselves. Uh, so I'm going to show like some projects with these three terms mainly uh, that are fundamental for us and in different kind of, uh, let's say, parts or percentages are we going to be present in different projects I'm going to show. So the idea of the environmental, the social and the technology part and how these three main, uh, let's say, um, 
fields of work are, can be divided into other kind of smaller uh, approaches, you know, which is the idea of the climatic comfort, the urban ecosystem, resiliency, interaction, innovation, open processes, but also the the need for, in our case, to work with the social part, you know, uh, sometimes with projects regarding education or engagement or, or equity. So I'm going to start with a project that was key for us at the beginning of uh, of our work, which is which is this. Uh, well, it's, it's not. This is what we wanted to do. No, in order to work with this place, and no, this is a place in the outskirts of, of Madrid, and this is I mean, there was no community at all. So we wanted to to create that kind of sense. No, after we have we we start working in this place. So what we wanted to the outcome we wanted was this idea of a, a, a place with a ground tree with people uh, really hanging out and and really uh, enjoying. Let's say the the, the climatic comfort provided by that shelter. So that's why we, uh, I'm not gonna go into detail with this project, but this is some images of the competition. We created this kind of prosthesis that are grown trees from the very beginning. And we implemented this kind of, uh, we used all these technologies in order to create the, uh, let's say the climatic comfort that usually, uh, you not know, the grown trees create from the very beginning. So these are the pavilions that we created in order to provide that kind of place Place that was being built uh, um, in the, as I said, the outskirts of Madrid, uh, with also with kind of metaphors connecting the idea of the artificial with the natural. Uh, as you can see there, this is a part of the city what, that was being built at the very same moment, in, and people start coming and, and uh, colonizing the, the, the different buildings while we, while we were building all these kind of pavilions. And the objective of this was bringing people outdoors. So let's let's not spend more time indoors and let's try to find places and to to qualify the public space in order to to provide places for engagement for connect, for social connections so in this case this is i'm going to show like some images very fast of what happened there after we finished our work and how in different years we have been monitoring how it how was the use of it as you can see here quite intense uh, um, with all kinds of activities and people enjoying the different spaces, uh, you know, especially during the summertime with this kind of shelter. So this idea was brought to a closer place to Hong Kong than Madrid, which is China in, in Shanghai. In this case, we were working for the Shanghai Expo. It was 10 years ago for 2010. So this was more or less the space of the public space and the public kind of uh, comfort or the public experience that was in a way provided by these kind of big uh, events, the, the Expo. And we wanted to, we had to bring this experience of the, you know, the outdoor, you know, the, 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 the grown tree, in this case, the, the, in the percentage of technology is higher than in the case of the air tree. But we built this pavilion that was interacting with the surrounding atmosphere in order to create an, a, also an, a place, an environment uh, underneath to create uh, well, we used the different tools. In this case, it was like, a, 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 no, before we were working with humidity. In this case, we were working with ventilation, as you can imagine in Hong Kong. No? How is the atmosphere in Shanghai, which is closed with a high degree of hum uh, humidity, etc. So we use different technologies in order to provide. And this is part of the experience that you could enjoy there. When in this case, you know, this um, was the Pavilion of Madrid showing the world uh, things that happen in, in Spain. In this case, this kind of uh, Chinese flamenca. You know, it's like uh, uh, flamenco dancers, you know, typical from Spain, but in this case performed by, uh, uh, by Chinese, Chinese uh, women. Well, also another experience uh, that we designed for this kind of trying to, but we had in mind the idea that the public space has to be like a place in which we can play with it. No, and not only play, but also transform in a way that can allow us to, uh, let's say, uh, interact with the environment. Now, usually we think that the uh, uh, you know, the environment in cities is designed more for a battle than for a playful experience. So in this case, we design this kind of furniture that very easily can be assembled and can create like different kind of uh, scenarios in order to provide uh, spaces for many things, you know, from the sleeping to enjoying what, what can happen or to, to to, I know, to talk or to many other things that can happen. Uh, but the idea was to adapt the, the, the public space, which usually is not very um, 
kind of uh, interactive and to be able to work with it in order to create like better environments for social uh, and uh, connections. In this case, we were working in, in the Netherlands. This is a competition we won. Uh, it, it was like a deprived uh, neighborhood and the city wanted to work with the kids there. So we we were chosen to design, uh, um, uh, let's say, um, an object in the public space that uh, that was able to interact with kids in the neighborhood in order to bring the kids outdoors and in order to create a social connection between the different families. So in this case, we designed this that was called the energy carousel. That was a carousel uh, completely designed by us uh, that was creating while kids were playing with it, was creating energy and that energy was uh, um, uh, during the afternoon and in, at night was you know, all the energy produced by play was transformed into colorful uh, uh, light so, and the code of the color and the, the color of the light was showing the amount of energy that was produced during the day uh, for the kids playing with this kind of uh, interactive object no so here you can see like some uh, images of this uh, uh, no playful object given to the kids of the city in order to provide this you no know, let's bring the kids outside and also let them let them think about you know, what kind of you no know, this idea of the, the energy the production of energy the the you know, the, the, the the resources that are not uh, you no know, as as huge in the in the earth as we uh, would like so this idea of while they are playing that they can be also uh, collecting like some information of what they are doing with it well some more images and at the same time that we were working with this project we were for example in this case invited to work in the Louisiana Museum of Modern Art, an amazing city in uh, an amazing place and museum in Denmark close to Copenhagen but in this case we were uh, uh, asked to produce like a, a, an interactive installation and we managed with the budget given uh, to produce this installation but also to launch with this uh, you know, the idea of how can we work together with the citizens in order to, to let's say transform the city uh, together into a, like a different uh, a scenario so we managed to, to produce a tool that has been used by us and by many other teams in different parts of in different urban projects so in this case it's an app which is what if app that was launched uh, you know, after Copenhagen that uh, that was like the the, the 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 beta test for this app it was as I said be, uh, before it was used in many other places in this case in Nantes in France and this tool was to to allow citizens to reflect about different urban spaces so it's a, a, a tool that has no scale it can be used so we you are mapping by using this tool you are mapping the desires information many things and implementing a layer on top of the um, existing uh, Google Maps. So this is an app that was completely developed by us uh, in order to be able to collect uh, like many information in, in the projects we were doing in different urban environments in different parts uh, uh, and in different countries. No? I mean, this is the app that was also shared online uh, in Creative Commons uh, with a create, create open license, Creative Commons, so we, so other teams uh, worldwide can, could work with it, and it has been downloaded. We are we are kind of um, updating the app, and I mean, we have like a community uh, working with us to do that at the same time. And and in order to show also no as i as i presented before we didn't have like a community in some of the previous projects no for example in the first one that i i you have seen like this uh, image of the city with almost nothing apart from the roads so there it was uh, it was hard to find a community to work with so this was like a project in which uh, we were sur uh, surprised by the energy you know that and or the social energy in which uh, the, the the city took it and the citizens took it and start to use it but at the same time we wanted to to start working in a project in which we were part of the process from the very beginning. And I say from the very beginning, it means also defining uh, what was the brief of the project. So it was not that the brief was given uh, to us. Okay, you have to do, uh, you know, as usually happens with architects, it's like you have to do something here, 
uh, I know this is the program, etc. This is when, when we always think that all the important decisions are already taken. So we wanted to be part of the process from the very beginning with the citizens trying to define what was the site, what was the, the program, what was the brief, etc. And we, we enter a competition in Norway uh, where, uh, where we create it and we finally end up winning the competition. We created this concept 1000 square that was designing a process during some months to work with the citizens in this city. And finally, this idea of the 1000 square after, uh, you know, when it was going to be implemented, we have like different conversations with the city and it was launched with a different name that was called this idea of Dreamhammer. So let's start together dreaming about the city. And we also designed like a complete process that during six months we were based in the city. Uh, we were like a team of architects all together working. And this is the, uh, the graphic design produced to uh, uh, let's say to jump to to launch the process of working together with the citizens. So these are the different parts. We we uh, we created like a physical lab, which was this space in front of the site that is like a parking place. It, it was the main square of the of this city in the north of uh, Oslo in Norway. And this is the physical space where we were we launched all kind of uh, exhibitions, conferences, all kind of things. We also these are all the ingredients that we designed for this participatory process. We created the digital lab uh, where many like online works because we wanted to bring also creative people from different parts of the, of the world, not only uh, working with creative people and citizens of the city, uh, like local people, but also worldwide uh, creative people working with this is some images of the of the website also we use this uh, the app to to try to be like more inclusive and bring an idea from people that couldn't even participate in the different workshops we design i mean different parts of the of the physical uh, lab that we design and all i mean people that were part of this process also there were other ingredients that was the urban action that was direct actions in the in the square we invited this uh, graffiti artist uh, from madrid uh, that during one weekend they completely transformed the the uh, the layout of the square because people couldn't think anything else than parking their cars there so we we had to erase completely the previous uh, no thoughts about the site in order to start like a, from a fresh point of view and this was you know this uh, we we created you know the paint hammer the the cream hammer that was on top of that kind of carpet that was created by the uh, graffiti artist uh, well all these kind of events that were created there like the green hammer uh, art hammer, film hammer, play hammer with the kids, light hammer with interactive uh, lights. And oh, well, you, you can see here like many of the interactions that happened there. Uh, also, we organize like all kind of different uh, lectures and workshops in thematic, uh, no, about, uh, and we created technology week, the activities week, the environment week, the people's week, the seasonal strategy week, which is very relevant, the seasons in, in Norway. Um, the future hammer week, uh, no, reflecting also about the interaction between the the digital and the physical environment. Another ingredient was creating academic networks that were going to use this uh, square as a case study in different uh, academic environments. In well, in Norway, in Italy, in Spain, in, in Ireland, in well, in different places. These are part of the uh, different uh, no, students and, and, and faculties that took place in this part of the academic network. And also, the, this uh, this is uh, the work we develop with more than one thousand high uh, high school students. Uh, you no, know, we work with them to also to produce models and to to, to collect their ideas and. The final part of this process was the, pre well, it's the beginning, but also I'm showing here the, the, at the end, which is the preliminary design. In order to share our ideas at the very beginning, before, before all this process happened, we share with the city what were our ideas at the beginning. So in order to be transparent and in order to show them how we also were shaped by the, by the whole process. So uh, these are part of these preliminary ideas we had about the site. And then after that, we collected all, um, all these uh, well ideas, interactions, etc. We organized them in different uh, features and we started to, to 
use all that uh, to produce a design, a design that, that should be uh, allowing all kind of different activities at, at this very same time. So there were, we were in a very, let's say, exposed situation because we were central in this moment in which we were creating the brief and we were deciding about the site, etc. So we didn't want to leave any let's say idea out of the uh, no of the uh, menu uh, to do design all that so we created this kind of uh, let's say interactive spaces that were uh, and you can see there mapping all the possible activities that uh, no that you can do there the social ring that was like a, a um, an auditorium but a water feature it was like a skate ring it was many things at the same time they a wooden shelter like a market a, a, a playful and, and game for kids uh, well like different features that were allowing many things many things in the very same place at the at the same time these different uh, images of that and uh, this is how it was implemented and the different things that started to happen when people started to use the place no and also uh, well in different moments no the skate ring how the 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 the, the, the social ring was is transformed into that and well and and, and the city was proud of this uh, no of this new public center of the of the city and they produced this christmas and they sent everywhere saying uh, no happy christmas to everyone with the image of what things that were happening there so we produced also a book and i'm gonna finish with uh no because this process was so important for us that in a way it created no we reflect about that and uh, for uh, we were invite invited to produce a, a, a display uh, for the, um, the Venice Biennale and we let's say we reflect about what was uh, had happened in this project and we created a methodology I'm gonna I'm gonna place a video of 90 seconds trying to explain that methodology extracting the ideas from this experience that was created in in Hammer I one one second i'm gonna share well i'm sharing i'm gonna share also the um the computer sound because i didn't share it before okay and that's it dream your city sounds interesting but what does it really mean oh sorry Dream Your City sounds interesting, but what does it really mean? Dream Your City is an innovative way of transforming urban spaces by setting up conditions that stimulate a public debate and generate new ideas, and by connecting local citizens to professional and academic networks worldwide. Is this just another utopian dream? Has anyone tried it yet? Yes, we recently used Dream Your City in Norway, where we redesigned the main town square of Hamar. We launched Dream Hamar with these tools. The Physical Lab, an on-site meeting place used for various events. Its open door policy made it a perfect spot to listen and be listened to. Urban Actions, public events on the square during which citizens could experience and test ideas at their real scale. The Academic Network, allowing over 1,500 students and faculty from various local schools and international institutions to become part of the design process. And finally, in order to connect Dream Hamar to the world, we built the Digital Lab, where creative people from all over the world could contribute their ideas and interact with others. Outputs from all these spheres of activity help to shape the new urban design concept for the square. So why Dream Your City? Why not? It builds resilient and proactive communities and allows for the creation of more inclusive and meaningful designs. Just dream about the possibilities and contact ecosistemaurbano.org. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Jose. That was really uh, inspiring and I think very innovative. Uh, and uh, I felt like uh, what not only started off with your journey of bringing environment, social, and technology together, and then probably it is very well showcased in your uh, Dream Hammer project, where you've done the whole circle of actually not only including the uh, people in uh, you know of all ages and uh, sections of society, 
but also making an impact that is beyond uh, just uh, the city there, actually beyond the country by building your uh, networks, I think, which is very important uh, with, with the academic. And I also like the fact that you even went to high school kids, not only college, university, but you know, it, it seems to go and I uh, all the way around. And I thought the, uh, even the app was very interesting where people can actually uh, input their um, information of like our concerns about the, our views about the public space. So uh, I think it was a great uh, presentation, very inspiring. I, I, you know, I was at Shanghai Expo. I was trying to recall whether, you know, I remember going on this, this particular, but it was very, very busy at that time, but very uh, innovative uh, projects. So I'm glad we had the opportunity to have you present here. And I think without, uh, we are running a bit late on time. I would like to go on to the.